everybody. Welcome in to Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah presents me, Deborah, with uh, today's vloggy thing. It is vlogging number 30. We are at the end of September. There's lots going on. Um, lots going on, including the fact that today I'm going to be getting my happy self out of the house. I know, right? Kind of scary. And um, going to town, little town of Livonia, where I, right outside of where I live. I mean, I live like way out of any town. But um, there is the fall festival, arts and craftsy kind of thing downtown. I love going to those. And I'm going to look around and I might buy something, I might not, but definitely a festival food. There's always festival food. But that's what's going on later today. Also, I'm hoping that my dear friend Sean comes over. Because I asked the hubby to help me with the three color challenge, um, which Neva, I know you tagged me. I forgot for a hot minute and then I stopped forgetting. And then the hubby walked into my little yarn area and looked around and he was like, nope, too many choices. He just had, I gave him a little bag to put it in. He just had to set it down and said, no, get Sean to do it. So my dear friend Sean should be coming over later. And I will kind of explain to him, like, don't pick a blanket yarn with a size two. I mean, you know, just general stuff like that. Pick me three colors and then I will come back and make a video about you guys helping me decide what to make with it. So yes, Neva, I have not forgotten. Now, I've got a ton of finished objects today. I mean, maybe not a ton, a ton for me, okay? I am a slow crocheter. And no, I did not work on the hubby blanket this week. Like, I think I did a half a row. Not enough to pick up and show. So, sorry. But you see this? Now this thing doesn't want to stay on my head properly. I may have to stick a bobby pin in the side. These are little cat ears, okay? Yes. These, this is done with a headband that I already had, which meant I could not use whatever pattern they were trying to say to use around a regular headband because well, this one is non-standard. Little ears that I ended up making up on my own and a bow that I ended up making on my own. Now the pattern that I was going to try to follow, here it is. Pardon me while I spin around like a moron. Uh, was this one. It was a free pattern by The Crocheting. I get a, um, I'm not sure if I saw this on Facebook. Facebook or if it's from an email that I get and I was like yes print it out let's do it and it could be just because I'm not really good at following patterns but y'all it was making zero sense to me um around the headband I knew it wasn't going to work because I had the wrong kind of headband so fine skip that part but for the ears <sighs> chain two so single crochet six into the second chain from hook and I'm expanding the abbreviations because it makes sound silly to say ch yes ch two yeah I get that alternative to the magic ring perfect round two single crochet in the next two stitches single crochet increase in the next stitch repeat from the star once more the stars at the chain okay I get that part but then it started getting weird and didn't work out and I just said you know what forget it. And I just crocheted little triangles, just kind of worked it out on my own. And then for the inner ear, I was having the same sort of an issue. It just wasn't making sense to me. And besides for the inner ear, they were saying to use a pink yarn. Well, I didn't want a pink yarn for the inner ear. I wanted it to be gray because I didn't have a pink that I liked. So I was using, oh gosh, let's not throw all this on the floor. I was using this stuff here. This is the feather fringe yarn that I got on clearance. Well, it's at least one ball of it. And I didn't use very much. Those little bitty ear things. Oh my gosh. You can't see your stitches. So I just kind of poked in there and made it till it worked out. I got fuzzy things in the ears. So there we go. My kitty ears have ear lashes. But anyway, it worked. And it just kind of... I was inspired by the pattern. And then I just said, forget about it. And did my own thing. Yeah. I think it's kind of cute. Even the hubby thought it was kind of cute. So bonus on me, right? Okay. That is one finished object. Let me 
toss this to the pile of doom over there because you know when I record all of the yarn stuff that's behind me ends up on the bed. The bed is now covered with project bags. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Speaking of the hubby, I bought, well, we were walking through Walmart the other day. You know, what had happened was, <laughs> and they had this chenille chunky yarn. Notice it is an empty ball band, okay? This stuff is a super bulky six. I'm thinking it might be closer to a seven. Hide that back down here. Says to use a 25 millimeter hook. He said, I said, oh, isn't that soft? We were walking through Walmart and he said, yeah. He said, that would make a neat hat. You want me to make you a hat out of that? Yeah. All right. So bought that, which by the way, this bag here is holding all of my ball bands, including the ones that we had the giveaway about. And we're going to do that again at the end of the year. So, think Adding to the ball band stash. Hang it on my whip caddy. And then, so, I just did a single crochet all the way around until I ran out of yarn hat. It is big. It is floofy. And he loves it. So, yeah, he really enjoyed it. And this is something that can be tossed in the wash. Um, he figures when it gets cold around here because we don't put the, okay, we don't put the heat on. I don't put the heat on unless I absolutely have to. I will bundle up in 73 layers before I put the heat on. That's just me. We're in Georgia. It doesn't get very cold here. It's not like, you know, up north where you guys have, you know, blizzard town. But, yeah, and this took me less than an hour to make because I mean how many stitches is that really although with that big hook and I was using a 20 millimeter hook because that was the biggest one I had it was like a workout because you're doing really well I have never worked with such big thick yarn before and I, I, I kind of like doing this with the hat and yes it fits you know because he doesn't have the poofy hair that I do it fits down on his head quite nicely and he said, he was sitting there for like three minutes and he was like, yeah, this is already warming my head up. Wow. So another finished object for this week, right? Put that over here. What else have I got? Oh, oh yeah. My friend Sean saw my wrist warmers that I made for myself, the, the lacy ones, the pink ones that I had on in my uh, Happy Mail video earlier this week. He's like, I want a pair of those, but maybe not in pink. I said, well, how about the camo that I did your hats in? Yeah. So I did that. No pattern. Let me put this on. Okay, I have rings on, so they're going to get stuck. Um, no pattern. I just kind of wung it, as it were. And I made like ribbing around the bottom. And because it's such a busy yarn, I just did double crochets. And a few a little bits, you know, and then decreases and increases and all of that. So... He hasn't seen these yet, so he will see them later on today, unless he watches the video first, in which case he'll see them right now. Look, Sean, I made your uh, fingerless gloves or mittens or whatever we're going to call them. Okay, that's not even all. I did more, y'all. <laughs> Last week I had as a whip um, my stitch marker holder. See that? Butterfly Dreams Crochet had the pattern for it. Um, mine turned out wider than the dowel that I had because, you know, I'm kind of a derpy person. So, oh, and this is the end of this yarn that I had. It was a scrap yarn and I was totally playing yarn chicken at the end. So what I did was I have these loops here at the top and this one is a little bit shorter. So it will probably kind of hold it up a little bit. I will get another dowel that's a little bit longer that didn't come from Dollar Tree. And I will put this up and hang stitch markers and earrings from it because the two sometimes are interchangeable. And I actually have a space in my bathroom next to my wall of nail polish that this is going to go up. And my bathroom is a, uh, a lilac lavender color. And this will look really nice with it, this kind of bright yellow. So yes, another finished object. Who am I, right? Okay. There is one more. Oh, and by the way, the cat ears, 
besides that fuzzy yarn, this is um, some Just Yarn from Dollar Tree, that Premier Just Yarn. And I had already used some of it in other things. It was not like I used an entire ball of it on that. And this is yet left from some yarn that I got at Goodwill. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of rough acrylic. Appears to be a four weight. It's an orangey color. I went with it. So I'm putting these in my scrap ball bucket up there. And oh, would you look at this? And yes, I will take it down and make it closer. This is the other, the final finished item that I have for this week. Look, I made one of the twirly things. Yes. And I did not follow a pattern because why would I? I mean, there's only a million patterns out there and tutorials. I just picked up a hook and started playing with more scraps. This, and I don't even know how much I chained. I just kind of went, yeah, okay, that might be long enough. And I made some kind of a funky tassel at the bottom that's heavy enough to hold it down. This is, this pink variegated is, I know it's a mainstays uh, pink variegated that I have used for hair scrunchies and about a half a dozen other things. And I still have a little bit left. This gray is a color, it's from a ball of um, Just Yarn from Dollar Tree again. There's still a little bit left of that. Some random white that I had that I still have part of a ball left of that. And some pink that was a basic stitch that I still have some left. I tried to use, I tried to scrap bust. This I was kind of doing for the um, Scrap Timber AU, which I still haven't sent the pictures in yet for. Which Peace Crafts uh, from Australia, yes. And she said, yeah, let's use our scraps up. Let's do some things in September. I just kind of like the way it looks. And I'm going to find a way to hang it probably in here somewhere, maybe out of reach of Oscar. Because I really don't want him tearing it up. Because if I hang it outside, A, I'm never going to see it because I don't go outside much. And B, the spiders will take over and make little houses in it. And then I'll never be able to take it down because spiders are cool outside. They eat bugs. You know, it's a thing. So, yeah. It'll be staying in the house somewhere. I actually might hang it up in my bathroom. I still have some room in there. I have one thing in there that I got in New Mexico that I love. It's hanging on the wall. It's cats. And it's made out of tin. And it's beautiful. Um, this might go in a corner. And actually, oh, you know what might be fun? A few drops of like essential oils up in there. Make it smell nice and pretty and citrusy because I love citrusy essential oils. Let me put this back up right now. I just got a Tunisian hook jammed underneath my uh, bucket of scrap balls just to have it a place to hang. Okay. Holy cannoli, y'all. That's a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lot going on in the yarning community right now. So many things to get in on. First thing that you need to make sure you do, there's Secret Santa starting right now. I know, you say, it's September. Why? Well, A, Dollar General's putting out their Christmas stuff right now. At the same time, they're putting up their Halloween stuff. I don't even want to go there. But that's not why we're doing it. Um, Lisa Ladybird Loves, you know, she is across the pond from me over in England. And she wanted to do a Secret Santa that everybody could be involved in. Make it worldwide. And you know how long it takes to ship stuff to other countries, right? Well, if we sign up now... We can get things out the door by the end of the, the late, latest shipping date, which for most areas is the end of October, to get things there in time for Christmas. So there are a lot of people already signed up. I'm signed up. If you sign up, you might get a gift from me. Who knows? You don't know who you're going to get paired with. Because a majority of the people, a, a preponderance of the people so far have been from the U.S., chances are you're going to get somebody from the U.S., but you might get somebody overseas. I am perfectly fine with getting somebody overseas. And I think it's fun. Um, Going to buy a present. I don't even normally celebrate the holidays. I normally work on Christmas because they need volunteers to work. And I just say, fine, I'll work. I don't have kids. We don't do anything for Christmas. No big deal to me. But I think it's fun. The giving part is fun. And that's what I enjoy. So please, I will have that linked down below to go and check out the Secret Santa stuff with Lisa. It's... Oh gosh, what is the name of the thing? Share, not share the love. Darn it, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a, it's an international secret Santa. 
check it out. Even if you don't participate, check it out. It's so easy to participate and have fun. There are price limits, so it's not going to be a big expensive thing. No, it's all about giving something and having some fun and just sort of, you know, sharing the warmth and the love on the, on the holiday season. Now, there are a bunch of cows coming up. Crochet along, C-A-L. Uh, also could be called make alongs because some people will knit. But anyway, I am ready for a few of them. What? Me? Three? I'm going to be doing three at once. And I know, I'm kind of crazy. Okay. First off, the pick and mix cow. That is coming up. That is also by Lisa Ladybird Loves. It is her first cow. She is nervous AF about it, but I think she's going to be just fine. It's fun. I've got my yarns picked out for it. Basically, the deal with that is going to be you're going to have one main color and then you pick four other colors that you will number one through four. And there are going to be a bunch of stitches, but there's going to be a spinny wheelie thingy that chooses the stitch and a spinny wheelie thingy that chooses your color at one through four. Now, you know, your one won't match my one because we're choosing different colors, but it's going to be either a lapkin or an afghan or you know however big you decide to make it um every week there's going to be one and i will have links down below for that because it's going to be a ton of fun we're going to all get together and make really cool stuff and i might even learn some new stitches that's going to be a big thing for me is learning more new stitches also vlogtober or crochettober depending on what you're calling it and exactly what you're doing with it uh neva and ashley neva from manic mama musings Hello, Neva, and Ashley from Stitch and Ain't Easy. Hello, Ashley. Uh, they have started off with the spiderweb square. Oh, blast it. I have put it down somewhere, and I don't know where, but I made mine already to start off because I'm excited. And every day we'll be adding to it. There's, they're going to have more details about it as it comes, comes closer, but it is going to be starting on the 1st of October. It's going to be going through and ending on Halloween. What fun is that? Just a little bit of commitment every day to add to your project. And it's going to be kind of scraptacular and beautiful. Um, also, Stephanie's Yarn Escape is going to have a cowl with her newly released cowl pattern. Um, I still need to go pick up the pattern, but I have my yarn chosen. Um, it's in a bag right over there, which I'm not going to go dig up and get right now because I have project bags everywhere right now. So that is happening. Also, speaking of the Vlogtober Crochettober, I'm going to try to put out a video every single day in October, right? Um, they're not going to be long. It's not going to be like a vloggy video. Some of them are going to be really short. Some of them are just going to be little check-ins, you know, maybe a little mental health check up from taking on all these cows at one time or something, but it's going to be an everyday thing and it's going to be fun. I hope that you join me for that. Now, speaking of checking in with a little mental health thing, we need to destigmatize talking about our mental health. I have been dealing with uh, chronic recurring major depressive disorder for a good bit of my life. Also CPTSD. So, and, and other things and anxiety related to those uh, that sort of branch off from each other. You see me at my video best. Um, but there are days, there are times when it's tough, okay? And Judy, I crochet every day with Judy, put out a little video sharing some of her struggles with mental health issues and depression, and I totally get it. And Judy, I love you. Thank you so much for talking about this. Neva does her... Um, uh, Mental Health Mondays. Boy, I was just having a total brain bubble there. Um, I know that Coping With Yarn was doing a Mental Health Monday for a while. I haven't seen her. I think she's just been super uber busy. And it's just something we need to talk about. Pardon the blip there. Had to pause and cough because you didn't want to hear that. But I will have Judy's link below. She does readings to where you can enjoy her readings while you're crocheting. She does crochet every day, much like I do. It helps with the old noggin space. It totally does. Um, and Judy is just a wonderful person and she's in a part of the country that I want to go back to again. Yes, she's in New Mexico in a very beautiful town 
that I did not get to spend enough time in the last time I was there. So, yeah. Thank you for visiting with Judy. And also, I do want to do a sort of non-Yarny shout out. There's a channel that the hubby and I make sure to check in with like every day because it is fun and it is light and it is always amusing. And that is called Girl with the Dogs. Um, I don't own dogs. I love dogs though. Do I love other people's dogs. Okay. But I've always been a cat person and that's totally fine. I love all animals. But Girl with the Dogs, and she does have some cats on there sometimes too. She is a pet groomer. Who And she has like her pet grooming studio, I believe, inside her house, like in a separate area. And she narrates her pet groomings, some of them. And they're shortened or edited for time and all of that. Sometimes you will just crack up because, okay, if you want to see the most dramatic dog ever, look at any of her husky videos. Oh my God, huskies are so dramatic, but they're so hilarious. She does so much fun stuff. She takes good care of the animals. You can tell she loves the animals. She occasionally has to bathe a kitty and she is so good with the kitties and she's, she's good with all of them. Even when they're trying not to be so good with her. Girl with the dogs. I will link that below. Make sure you give it a look. Okay. This has been a long one today. I want to thank you for coming by. Please check the description box below for the links of everything that I talked about and also some other information as well, including my Kofi link and my, uh, you know, Amazon wish list and all that good stuff because, you know, I'm a poor crocheter, y'all. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you for coming by. Please hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you next time.